All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be going over a time-lapse video of this painting, and I'm going to specifically talk about the aspects uh, to focus on with creating good depth within your painting. So let's get to it. All right, first off with the preliminary drawing here, um, it's very important to nail your drawing uh, to get depth, you know, you, if you, you need to make sure things are over, overlapping correctly, that things are sitting in the background that you want to sit in the background. And with this paint in particular, these bushes were key because they're like a repetitive element and it going further, you know, them correctly reading as if they're going further back in space was huge for creating depth in this foreground here. So I, would, I had to be very careful and make sure that they, I drew them and they were different sizes. Uh, because a lot of time with repetitive elements like this, people will tend to draw them the exact same size or the exact same distance apart or have them on the same uh, plane horizontally. So they don't really look like they're stepping back in the space. So uh, with your preliminary drawing, whether you're drawing you know, bushes or river, trees, um, any kind of element that's repetitive and that's taking you further into the painting, uh, just be aware of those pitfalls of making it the same size, the same shape, same distance apart, and just being aware of that, being able to change it and make it work for the painting. So there's a lot of green in this painting, and it's very easily easy to kind of get caught up in that and to make all the greens too similar, and that way there's no real uh, distinction between the uh, <clears throat> different levels of the painting stepping backwards. And so some things to realize is that as uh, things get further away from you in space, they're going to get cooler. That's why your mountains on the distance are going to be, you know, blues and purples and, you know, things in the foreground like grasses that would be or trees that would be bluer on the horizon are going to be uh, have more reds and yellows in them in the foreground. So be aware of that and be constantly comparing. Like you'll see, I'm never really finishing one area like I haven't finished any area of the painting here. I've just kind of laid in my darks and now some mid-tones, but I'm constantly comparing and making sure that I'm pushing and pulling the temperature of the colors and the value of the colors as needed in relative to, you know, what's happening in front of it. Like I'm making sure that my bushes are staying more saturated and warmer in this foreground than, you know, the trees in that, uh, mountain in the middle ground another thing to know is that as things get further back in space they're going to get uh, less saturated so you know a green that might be a really rich warm green in the foreground on a hill in the distance it's going to be a little more saturated so you're going to put like a little more red into it and it's not going to be as a vibrant green you'll see later on when i put the grasses in the foreground they're going to be a very vibrant green and yet the grass that I've laid down here in the in the hill in the distance it's I neutralized it just a little bit it's not gonna pop like it is in the grass in the foreground which is what I want so this grass this neutral grass in the background you know when I put this grass in the foreground that's really vibrant it's really gonna pop because it has this more neutral grass right next to it and so it will sit in the foreground a lot better this goes for the, the bushes too. Uh, it might be hard to tell in the video, but my darkest darks in these foreground bushes, I actually put a good amount of red, a lot of cadmium red in them. Mixed up some ultramarine blue, a little bit of the uh, uh, lemon yellow and a lot of uh, cadmium red to really get these this really warm darks to hold these bushes in the foreground. And in the very distance, like the little, the you know, skyline city in the background. And by that point, I was pretty much just using uh, ultramarine blue and white to like keep that really cool. And I think later on you'll see I'll, the whole city area, I'll, I'll cool it down and actually add a little more white to it. Um, that's another thing is adding, you know, as things go in the distance, you might be finding yourself adding more white. Don't get too caught up into that and relying on that completely to set things in distance, kind of like an easy way to put things in the distance is just adding more white to it because it's going to be just less naturally like less saturated um, but it's not going to work as well as really understanding 
the color temperature of what you're doing. Also, I've started right here. The thing with brush strokes, um, which is very helpful, is I feel like as things are further in the distance, the brush strokes tend to be more um, larger and, and horizontal. And like you can, this is kind of like a, a preference thing, but it is a tool that you can use. Uh, you can see, like I've, I've started to use vertical brush strokes with this uh, grass right in the foreground with the yellow, with the flowers. And it's more detailed brush strokes and more brush strokes in the foreground because as things are closer to you it's like a it's like a picture they, there's going to be more detail so you kind of use that to your advantage and if you have a like a very simple plain like grass or something if you want it to subtly read closer to you um adding more detail in the foreground and like like i did here like actually making vertical brush strokes not i'm not doing every single blade of grass but i'm kind of doing chunks of grass whereas you know like a bush or two back you can see that i i don't even worry about brush strokes i'm just worried about the solid color of my brush strokes are horizontal opposed to these vertical brush strokes which are going to just help me just a little more set this uh grass in the foreground i'm also putting a lot more red into the grass in the foreground here you can see in the bottom left corner kind of keep that in the foreground and with the sky I'm using uh, cerulean blue and white and actually a touch of um, alizarin, alizarin crimson to because it's you know it's LA and there's like this little bit of smog actually on the horizon kind of reads uh, a little more like a purplish tint to it but using the it's really blue and making still making sure you know that my sky is my lightest value plane and see at this point I pretty much have all the elements in the painting there and it's just a matter of pushing and pulling things to make it to where I want like I'm you know that uh, my foreground is sitting in the foreground my middle ground sitting in the middle ground my backgrounds in the background like everything is where it is and at this point it's just fine-tuning and pushing it further or pulling it closer to me as I want or seeing if I need to add a little more detail in the foreground to push it forward or simplify a lot of times you need to simplify things you have too many brush strokes in the distance and you need to simplify those too but I hope you um, found this video helpful uh, I hope you took away some helpful tips to set your you know add a lot more depth to your paintings uh, I'll probably go in detail uh, certain aspects of this video in another video, uh, like talk more in detail about the drawing phase or, you know, color saturation or, um, you know, color temperature. Uh, but I just wanted to give this like basic overview of how to go about, you know, working a landscape as a whole in terms of adding depth. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.